Hey, what's up guys? Thanks so much for hanging out with us here on Beautifully Courageous. Thanks not just for watching, but for subscribing and sharing. It's meant a lot to us. Today we're going to talk about the value of friendship and we're going to bring in some of our very best friends to do that with us. And you'll see that in just a second. Man, we are so excited to be here today with just really three of our closest friends. We've been friends for years. Mm -hmm. uh, Brooke and Jeanette are kind of the, the origin point, and then Enoch was brought into the picture, and then James through ministry and church, and uh, we've enjoyed doing life with them. And so we thought that it would be really cool to bring them in and talk about just that, friendship and community, why it's important, uh, why we value it as a couple, and, and you're going to hear from all, all five of us at some point about friendship. So I would like to say that this year we celebrate 10 years of friendship. We do. Wow. It's our 10 year anniversary. Are you, are you guys doing anything big for that? We're trying. We're, Wait. We've been trying. Wait, so so your friendship is as long as the iPhone's been out. Yes. Yeah. Basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You've been friends longer than we've been together. We go back to the black Is that Y'all were friends yeah. before we were together? We, well, we well, were frenemies first. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't really like each other. We won't talk about that. Okay. From frenemies to friendly. You know, me and another friend started that way, though. Yeah. Well, Leah. Isn't that how all girl friendships mm -hmm. start? Like you hate yeah. each other? Yeah. Yeah. And then you become best friends? Yeah. yeah. Pause. What? Well, go pee, buddy. Okay. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> Parenthood. Hey, so let me ask you this. Um, friendship, why yeah. is it important to you? Why? Because it's an extension of family, mm. in my opinion. Um, there's certain people, if you're like me, you share certain secrets with your friends that you don't necessarily share with your family. That's true. Um, you do a lot, I think you do a lot of more exploring mm. with friends than you do yeah. with family. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's just it's an extension of family. That's good. Uh, my How about you? You I've obviously been in North Carolina for eight. March 2010, so almost seven years. Seven years. Almost eight years. Eight years. Almost eight years. Almost eight years. Yeah. And so that's put you, you know, from the military. You did a, a stint in the Air Force. A couple, yeah. A couple tours, right? Mm-hmm. Did yeah. yeah. Did two. And uh, so you're a veteran now. Yeah. You have a veteran hat. I do. <laughs> I, I like to wear that in my private time. <laughs> Sometimes, if I need to go to the dump, I'll put that on. Yes. And Just strike out the conversation. Yeah. When, the I drive, the when the guy dump, when I pull up, I go, yes. like that. And probably because you're wearing it, you can put your recyclables in the trash. And you're I can do what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just kidding. It's not really. <laughs> Friendship for me in. means everything. Um, yeah. Especially in the last uh, near eight years where I've been away from family um, the entire time. and We live where she's always grown up. Um, so it's two different worlds living in the same house. So she's she comes from a smaller family. They've always been kind of within, you know, five miles. You know, the first one moved was two minutes up the road yeah. and we moved back into the house. Um, for me, I've been 500 miles away from my family for eight years. And yes, I went to go see them a couple times a year, but like, Having friends locally is, is one thing, but having friends in that share the same passion as you do, getting plugged into the ministry, um, watching you know God's baby grow, but knowing He's giving you you know some reins to help you know cultivate mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, and I posted a picture uh, soon after you were you know called to do ministry elsewhere. Um, it showed just a few of the youth, some of us jumping and just having a good time. And I said we were young but we built that empire. We can look back on that. Yeah. And it's, it's just really cool to think about just doing life with friends and seeing all the fruition come out of that and just knowing that you did that together. Yeah. And you know, um, being here, she has family, which is my family, but um, I get a lot of my support from my friends. You know what I mean? So um, I hold on to that and I don't take it lightly. Yeah. So about you ladies, uh, as the longest tenured friends here at this table, why do you value friendship and, and maybe specifically how has your friendship with each other helped you uh, through the different transitions that you've experienced in life? We don't. We don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're just stuck yes. with each other at this yes. point. Like, it's just yep. life. Well, for me, okay, so for, 
for the whole time we've been friends, for the most part, you and her have been together. For me, it's been a few. I know, would you just, <laughs> like, would you just pick a guy? Oh, I'm so you know, you <laughs> Every time you got a guy to be their friend and then they would leave and I'm oh, okay, new but friend. But it's always <laughs> You lose the yeah, like you lose out. <laughs> yeah, so you said <laughs> Jeanette, three. Why don't you choose? Right. It's one of the like yeah, you choose. Yeah. So. so, but for me, it was good because it was. I felt like I always had that grounding. Like, yeah. it was not like I never lost my friendships, and I. I mean, I feel bad. I don't I feel bad because the guys kind of did, but yeah. yeah. Like for me, it was always a safe place. I could come yeah. not only to her but to you too. Like y'all were always there yeah. when it was like. Look, this guy's doing me wrong. Yeah. Right. What are y'all's opinion on? So it was always a great place. <laughs> Still that way. Yeah. Like, Look, this guy's doing me wrong. Hey man, I love you, bro. <laughs> Shoot, man, I'm guessing. you're my favorite, bro. Support. Yes. <laughs> but I just mean, so, but that was a big part for me. Yeah. Big part yeah. for me. For me, like Jeanette's always been a constant, but friendship's just important in general. For me, it's a it's a safe place. I think that's what she was trying to say is yeah. we always have had that safe place with each other and for us we we thought she would be the one to move away and there was that mm -hmm. one yeah. scare and I lost my mind you know, uh, yeah, I remember that. and then it happened to be us move away yeah. and I think if anything it's opened our eyes to see like the depth of our friendship mm -hmm. and, and the depth yeah. that, that we can bear anything yeah. and still our relationship has so much value yeah. um, and, and those are the friendships that I desire in my life All right, we're back hi he said hey to Here's everybody. Here's one of the byproducts. Say hey. Friendship. Yeah. <laughs> byproducts of friendship. One of the things that Brooke and I have noticed in just doing almost 10 years of ministry is it seems that a lot of people that don't have true friendship, that also means that, that community and accountability is kind of absent from their life. Yeah. And what we found is that when you focus on building true friendships, and you're only going to have about five to seven of these in your life, like true, true friendships, that accountability and community are a byproduct of that. It just happens naturally. And uh, all five of us here have kind of shared that over the past several years. And there have been moments where uh, that community has, has helped. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kept us focused. It's kept us ground. It's lifted us up when we were, we were discouraged. Or that accountability has kept us from doing or saying something that we would have regretted doing. Um, or it's been a safe place to at least heal mm -hmm. if we did do something stupid. I've never been the type to like take ownership of a, of a group or lead a group in anything. And then when we used to do the, uh, the summer camps uh, in the ministry, one year you gave me the opportunity to actually lead a group of students, something I had never done. Yeah. But um, by being friends with you for the previous two, three years and you helping me grow in, in my walk with Christ, um, it made me, um, knowing that should I fail, I had somebody that I could go to and and, and fall yeah. back on and say, "Hey, Josh, how do I do this? How can I do this?" And sure. um, so that's that's just one thing for me. That's awesome, man. That's really you hated me though afterwards because yeah, because I didn't sleep <laughs> all week. I had twelve hours of sleep for the whole week. I, and I could throw that right back at you. There were, there were so many times uh, when we were living closer to you guys where uh, it wasn't necessarily like we were at a. a a breaking point but we were just we were feeling the pressure financially just trying to take care of three kids mm -hmm. and Brooke staying at home and your generosity in yeah. more ways than one uh, just showed us how much you valued us and loved us man so I could say that right back at you yeah. seriously so that accountability factor is really cool mm -hmm. for like me and Jeanette we kind of have and I tell you this all the time I don't care I'll say it to her <laughs> like <laughs> because yeah. I will and she, she's the same way back to right. me like yeah. she'll say it right back to me yeah. is we're not afraid to say something too strong to one another because we know the heart behind it and where it's coming from and that it it wasn't just like a I'm being a jerk but that yeah. I mean it from the best part of my heart and so I think having close-knit friendships and close-knit community causes you to be better mm. because we want what's best for one another so good it's easier to be the one to say things to people. How did you get to a place where you were not just comfortable, but where you wanted and you invited Jeanette to be that person to speak into your life? I guess we've walked through so many battles together 
And even in the time that we felt like we were burned by one another, it was a friendship that, that held. Mm-hmm. That even even in those most awkward moments, we could look at each other and say, like, I did do this and I'm super sorry for it. Yeah. And I never meant to intentionally hurt you. And we've had those conversations mm-hmm. and our friendship held up through that. And girl, girl friendships just don't hold up through yeah. that sort of thing. And so when, when the tension and when the friendship became vulnerable, that made us realize, okay, this is the real deal. And she means what she says. Mm-hmm. And, and, and she means it from the bottom of her heart, not from a place where she wants to get back at me or take mm-hmm. something from me or cause me harm. Yeah. No, she wants this because she truly believes I can get to this next place or I can do this or mm-hmm. I'm worth this. Friendship is everything. I know that uh, Scott and you and I sat down one day and I talked about like I had this crazy obsession with wanting to please people. But I've always wanted to do that because I've always wanted friends. I grew up in a house full of girls so it just kind of made yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. But having someone who, like, when you mess up, you know, you apologize. You know, it may take a little while, but you apologize, and vice versa. Um, we're good at that. That's why we never really just butt heads. Um, James and I having James at work with me, it's just it's a, it's a cool steadiness yeah. that's at work. Because if I, I'm having a rough day at work, whatever, I can look over. Oh, there's James. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we've been through, you know, the spiritual warfare battles together. The yeah. Code Red, the summer camps he's talking about, and it's cool to see that constant over there on the counter. Um, so James's presence, your faithfulness to friendship, that Jonathan and David relationship, yeah. um, I'm so blessed to have it. I'm blessed to have people like Scott, who's like a, a dad slash bro. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. he's not afraid of. As soon as you he is old. He's Scott is old. <laughs> he's he's, he's why you're watching this. You're old, bro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, if if I ask him a question and I could be coming like you know I really want to know or what do you think? Like, what's your stance on this? He'll tell you and he'll know what your motives are <laughs> behind that yeah. and he'll get on to you for it. Yeah, right. You're like I never want to ask you a question again. <laughs> but you keep going back because yeah. it's truth. It's yes. refreshing. Yeah. You know. And he's yeah. really, he's not telling you what you want to hear or tell you something on top. He's yeah. hes cutting the cake open and layering you. He knows, yeah. all right, this needs to start, then this needs to come. I appreciate that more than anything. I appreciate someone like Brooke and Jeanette's life. Um, where Jeanette's at, she, uh, she has friends at work and stuff like that, but, you know, they're not the same age, you know, and it's good for her to have a confidant. She can run to if she needs anything. And I appreciate Mike all the way in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Um, what up, Clem? And it is Walmart Snapchat. Yeah, right. <laughs> I appreciate those. I really appreciate that friendship. And that friendship means so much to me. It's such a um, gift to me in my life, as well as in ministry, um, that I want Tegan to grow up with um, our friends, you know, kids, and yeah. I want her to experience that love, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how, impactful was I want my child to have that yeah so yeah. and I think that's a whole nother level that we're tapping into now is are the friendships that we have closest to us it's not just about us anymore but we are inherently inviting them into our kids lives too mm-hmm. and so that's why it's so vital to have friendships like you just mentioned because yeah. same thing like our house is open like we say all the time if we have an open door and a crowded table then you'll always have a full heart and we believe that yeah. But at the same time, we're very strategic and intentional with who we invite into our life on that level. And you right. guys are all on that level because of what you've added to us. Tier one. Tier one, that's Tier right. One. Tier one, that's right. Uh, other than just accountability and, and community and trust and all those things, I would say probably the thing that we do the most is we laugh with each other and we laugh, we laugh at each other. And um, One day, I promise you, I, world watching this, that one day I'll capture on video what happens when I scare you not because oh my gosh. it will make There's you... There's no laughter for you. <laughs> It really is so funny. One day it's gonna happen. It's not, uh, it's not that funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we love we love laughing together. We love we love just experiencing things together. I think I mean that's a huge value for us as a yeah. family. But in our friendships, like we just love experiencing things like WrestleMania 30. You know, yeah. experiencing things like that. Right? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just. And uh, so yeah, when we get together, we do things that like New are New York City. Well, in New York City, yeah, yeah, right. New York yeah. City. I, go. <laughs> yeah. I still want to go. Yeah. Oh, oh here, so. <laughs> you didn't even mean it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I I know, let's play a game where we leave someone out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and so we do things like some of the parties and the watch parties that we've had and the game nights and so all the things oh, that we do. Yeah. 12, Halloween. Oh gosh, man, so many things. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do all the time, and this is based off of one of our favorite shows, is MasterChef. <laughs> And uh, we love on Master Chef when they get to do the Mystery Box Challenge. So here in just a second, uh, you're going to get a chance to watch us compete in our very own version of Mystery Box. Now I want to want to caution it with this. So the girls here picked out the ingredients. So we can't promise you that what you're going to see is going to look appetizing. We're going to do our best to see. I don't know. We'll we'll find out. We'll find out. I don't, I don't want to guarantee. They probably yeah. got goulash yeah. by the time we're done with it. So. Yeah. But if this has been meaningful for you, if you've enjoyed it, please do me a favor. Make sure you subscribe. And then if you want to get notifications when we go live or when we post videos, there's going to be a little bell beside the subscribe button. You can click that to get notified. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Later. Is this where we sing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was too fast. That okay. too fast, right? No, that's about right. All right, okay. Yeah, that was good. Okay.